force of gravity is an equation that we've used many times. What is synonymous with the force of gravity? Just to remind ourselves, what is synonymous with the force of dra gravity? Jeff? Uh, actually, no, force normal is not synonymous. We would have to draw a free body diagram to sum the forces. Sometimes the force normal is equal to force gravity. That is not always true. There is a term for the force of gravity, which you're probably more familiar with. I use the term force of gravity, however, more commonly in your everyday lives. That term is what, Learn. Nope. Acceleration of gravity and force of gravity are two different things. The force of gravity is synonymous with Miller. Weight, the term weight and the force of gravity are synonymous. They mean the same thing. What is the equation for the force of gravity? Person. M times G, what is G? Uh, here on planet Earth, it is 9.8 meters per second squared. What is the name of G? Toya. Like acceleration, acceleration due to gravity. When we use this equation, it is important to understand that, that we're missing a subscript. It's pretty much understood, and we don't normally put it there. But I'm going to put it there right now to make sure that we understand that this is the mass of the object. Whatever object we happen to be talking about, the force of gravity acting on Mr. Palmer, the force of gravity acting on your calculator, it doesn't matter. Whatever object we have to be talking about. But this is actually the force of gravity between the object and what? This is the force of gravity that exists between the object and one other object. Who can tell me what that object is? I'll give you a hint. Jack? The Earth is the other object. The two masses in this equation are actually the force of gravity acting on the object, but that is between the object and the Earth, always. We actually have another equation now in section three of chapter seven for the force of gravity. The force of gravity is equal to big G, M1, M2 over R squared. This is called Newton's universal law of gravitation. Uh, I call it the big G equation, because that's the big G as opposed to the little g, but of gravitation. Bless you. All right. Now, the way this works is we have big G. Big G is the universal gravitational constant. It has a number 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 newtons times meter squared divided by kilogram squared. Now, both of these items are boxed. Big G is also boxed. It is a number 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 newtons times meter squared divided by kilogram squared. The interesting thing about this is uh, Sir Isaac Newton is the one who came up with the equation big G M1 M2 over R squared. However, he never knew the acceleration or the universal gravitational constant to more than about one sig fig. Uh, he died in early 1700s, 1720 something. Um, and it wasn't until right around 1800 by the, a guy by the name of Henry Cavendish actually came up with an experiment to determine the universal gravitational constant at 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 newtons times kilograms, oh, sorry, times meters squared by kilograms squared. He used something called a torsion pendulum to do so. So it's interesting to, to point out that Newton himself, who came up with the equation, never actually knew the universal gravitational constant to very more than one sig fig. Now, Clearly, we have the universal gravitational constant, big G. M1 and M2 are the two masses involved in this force of gravity. And R is, it's important for you to realize this. Class, please repeat after me. R is not the radius. R is not the radius. R is simply, R is simply the distance between the, distance between the, center, of the center of masses of the two objects. You don't have to repeat. So that is important because R is so often confused with the radius. R is the distance between the center of masses of the two objects. Now, so R just by definition is not the radius. It is the distance between the center of masses of the two objects. Now, this is especially confusing because sometimes R actually is the radius. 
but not by definition. It's the distance between the center of masses of the two objects. So anytime we have two objects that have mass, we actually have a force of gravity that exists between the two of them. 